I'm John, um, live in the New Forest. Um, I have many passions in life. One of them is antique trucks, which I love to buy and then completely restore and then show them. Uh, the other one I have, which is a, a greater passion, is Great War poetry, soldier poets, which I've done for many years. Um, unfortunately, COVID has stopped that as well. But I still have a mindful of it, and I would like to share it with people. So here I am, going to put two on every month for, could be the next year or the next two years. But at the moment, I, um, it's going to be two I'm going to do this time. So the first poem I'm going to do is by a young man called Edward Wyndham Tennant. He was born in 1897 and he was killed in 1916. He was actually uh, born in um, Wiltshire but educated at Winchester. He was absolutely he idolised his mother. This shows his affection towards his mother in 1906, 1906 when he was um, seven years old. He's called the face. I know a face, a lovely face, that's full of beauty as of grace, a face of pleasure. In ever bright, in utter darkness, it gives light. A face that is itself like joy. To have seen it, I'm a lucky boy. But I have a joy that had few others. That lovely woman is my mother. So that gives you an example of his sort of work where he's doing. Um, the Great War comes along in 1914 and he joins the family regiment, which is the Grenadier Guards. Because he comes from that sort of background, it doesn't take him long before he gets a commission. Um, He's soon off to France after he's done his training at the age of 17. While he was in France, he actually made friends with Osbert Sitwell and Raymond Asquith. That's the Prime Minister's son of the day. Um, the regiment is moving up through the front lines and it sees all these towns and villages that are completely wrecked and ruined. Um, Tennant, young Tennant at the age of 17, 18, he sees the green grasses behind the houses and he desires to go in and have a look at them. He takes two friends with him and this is what he sees. He puts it all in poetry form. It is a ballad form of poetry. Uh, he, it is really quite stunning for uh, this young man to be able to do this. Green Gardens and Levente. Green gardens in Levente, soldiers, they only know the street where the mud is churned and splashed about by battle wending feet. And yet besides one stricken house, there's a glimpse of grass. Look for it when you pass. Now beyond the church whose pit is spire, it seems balanced by a strand with swaying stone and tottering brick, there to roofless ruin now stand, and there behind the wreckage, where the back wall should have been, we found a garden green. Now that grass was never trodden on, that weedy path of gravel is now overgrown with celandine, where no other folk did travel, along its sweedy surface except the nimble-footed mouse running from house to house. We lay all amongst the vivid blades of soft and tender grass. We heard, but not saw, the limber wheels that pass, they ever pass, in their noisy continuity until their very rattle, it seems in itself, a battle. At length we rose up from the seas with a tranquil happy mind to explore the garden's little length 
it was there, a fresh pleasurance to find. Golden yellow daffodils and a jasmine hanging high. Now that did rest our tired eyes. Now the fairest and the most fragrant of the many sweets we found was a little bush, a daphnin flower, upon a grassy mound. And so thick were the blossom sets, and so divine the scent, we was well content. Now hungry for spring, I bent my head, and the perfume, it fanned my face, and all my soul was dancing in that lovely little place, dancing with a measured step amongst this wreck and this ruined town. But away, away up high upon the downs, I saw green banks of daffodils, slim populars in breeze, and the great tan brown hair in gusty march, a courting on the lees and meadows with glittering streams and silver scurrying days. Home, 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 it's my perfect place. Edward Wynne and Tennant's death, um, as I mentioned earlier, his great friend was uh, Raymond Asquith. Raymond Asquith uh, was 39. He looked on him more as a father figure. Raymond was killed two days earlier than his death. What we're talking about here is retaliation, vengeance. So he does that, he goes to the trenches and he starts sniping at the Germans. And guess what happens to him? He gets sniped back. He's killed instantly. Um, it's a great sadness, really, such a talented young man. Um, but that was the story of the poets of the Great War. The next poem I'm going to do is completely opposite to that beautiful piece I've just done. Um, this is really graphic and raw. It's from the mind of Arthur Graham West. Arthur Graham West was really an atheist. He could see no sense in this wretched war whatsoever. The killing of thousands of men every day. And the politicians just carried on and carried on. So Arthur... He's, um, he's asked to do this night patrol. Um, he agrees to it, but the deal is he gets a bit of extra run when he comes back. Um, he takes two men with him and they follow up. Now, as you can see, when you're doing a night patrol, it's dark and you need to be able to get out and come back. So what he does, Arthur, was he observes all the objects as he goes out and uses them to come back. He, the one thing he does see is plenty of bodies. Hmm, sad, but that's what he observes all the time. This, look, this piece of poetry is really graphic and raw. I'm sorry, it's called The Night Patrol. Over the top, the wire, it's thin here. There's plain rusty coils, not staked, low enough. Full of old tins, though. Now when you're through, all free, aim a quarter left for 50 yards or so. Then go straight for that new piece of German wire. See how thick it is. Stay a while. Listen for signs of working, but for Christ's sake, don't run any risk. Now in about an hour, now over, we placed our hands on the topmost sandbag. We leapt and stood for a second. We crept to our wire, we wormed our way, we tinkled through. We glanced back, we drop. Now the sudden ground, it splashed with shallow pools and the tufts of crackling corn stalks that are now two years old that no man could reap with patches of new spring grass that's half seen as rose and sank the flares and strewn are the wrecks 
of our attacks. There's bandoliers, there's packs, there's rifles, bayonets, belts, have a sax, shell splinters, and huge forms of shells that have been shot quite fruitlessly, but everywhere, yes, everywhere, is the dead. The dead, they're always present, they're present as a vile, sickly stench of utter rottenness. The rustling stubble, the early spring grass, then slimy pools. Our dead men, they stank through all, pungent and sharp, as more bodies loom before. We pass, they stank, they dull away. To what vague factor are they now all encompassing? They lay all clothed, each in their new piteous attitude that we well marked and remembered to guide us back. Now there's he outside our wire, led on his back, crossed his legs crusader-wise. I smiled on that and thought of a liar on his temple church. From him, a quarter left, down in a hollow, huddled as if he was in bed, lay a small corpse that one of us put his hands on unawares. Next, there's half a dozen men. They're all blown to pieces. It's an archipelago of corrupt fragments that are now vexing to us three who have no light to guide us by, save them flares on such a trail that is so lit for 90 yards as we crawl on our bellies and elbows. And instead of more limpest dead, we see the stakes and the cross lines of that new piece of German wire. We lay in shelter behind our last dead man, ourselves as dead as he. We heard their shovels ringing. They're turning the earth. Someone talked and coughed at times. A sentry fired, a machine gun spat. They shot a flare above us, it fell and spluttered out in them pools of no man's land. We turn towards our remembered dead. We pass him, him, them, and him, until some way apart we caught the scent of the crusader man. We slid past his legs. We got under the wire, we got home, and we got our run. Arthur Graham West, being an officer as he was, he leaves the trenches a few months later with his men. And I swear deliberately he was snipered. Anyway, he was shot and he was killed outright. Listen, if you hate war, you can't stand to see it. So he just gets rid of himself. Arthur Graham West, The Night Patrol. Thank you for listening. That's the two poems for this month. I'll come back next month and give you two more. I hope you enjoyed the last two. Thank you.